Hey, Tim Layton here. Welcome back to the next edition of Pictorial Whispers, where I'm taking you on an adventure uh, in the new uh, mobile darkroom, the Winnebago Hike 100 Camper. And we uh, exposed uh, six sheets of FP4 large format uh, film in the Graflex uh, vintage cameras. And I just got them uh, developed. So I'm gonna take you inside, show you a sneak peek this is a long episode, but man, there were so many twists and turns and so many different things. And I learned a lot. I took a lot of notes and I'm really excited uh, to go on the next adventure. Uh, but uh, in this next episode, I'll be printing these uh, four by five negatives, platinum and palladium prints. So stay tuned for that. Let me give you a sneak peek of what the negatives look like and then we'll go from there. All right, I'll give you a sneak peek at the negatives that I just developed. Here they are right here. Man, they just turned out absolutely fantastic. So I can't wait to print those in the next episode, which I'll take you along on that. Also, too, um, if you want to make sure you understand the narrative of the work and the artist statement, just go to the website, timlaytonfineart.com, and you'll see pictorial whispers, and that way you'll understand the context of what I'm doing. Uh, there's the development environment, I guess post-mortem, if you will. And uh, I ran an unedited, unedited segment of the entire development process so you could just see it real time. So uh, getting ready to clean up and uh, actually head home. But uh, anyway, I'm gonna let these dry real good and I'm gonna go take a walk. And then, um, yeah, I'll, head back. I'll be heading back out uh, next weekend for a four day adventure. Uh, hopefully I can get even more, but I'm so excited about these negatives. I can't wait to print them. So anyway, make sure you subscribe uh, here on YouTube and you can go to the website, timlatonfineart.com, where I have a lot more articles and things like that than I do publish here. And you can uh, subscribe to the blog there and you get an email whenever I publish new videos and also new articles. So anyway, enjoy this episode. I'm getting ready to head out on my very first adventure in my Winnebago. Uh, this is the Hike 100 series. It's the 1316 model. And uh, in the last video, I kind of showed you around, so I won't do that again if you want to kind of look around. And then I'm using it as a mobile darkroom. I do large format photography. I develop film uh, inside of here. I do wet plate collodion inside of here, or I will, I should say. And uh, today, <clears throat> in this video, what you're gonna see is me preparing uh, for my first trip and go through some things to get set up and then we'll head over to the dark room, meaning the real dark room. And uh, I've got all of my uh, development stuff. I'll uh, go over how I plan on developing my film. I'll be using my Graflex uh, Series D 4x5 SLR large format camera. I've uh, covered that in previous videos and you can check that out if you're interested in it. And then I'm doing all of this for my Pictorial Whispers project. It's a memorial project for my daughter uh, where I'm photographing and telling the story of the wild horses of Missouri. And I need to be able to get out and spend uh, periods of time in various areas, a lot of hiking, uh, a lot of difficult country uh, where those horses are and uh, being able to spend more time over there in this camper is really uh, the key. So uh, that's kind of the backstory. What I'm getting ready to do right now is fill it up with water and we'll see how long that takes. Oh, one update uh, from the last video is I got these pads called snap pads and you can see the metal plate is here and then these pads uh, go on. So it's, um, that's, that's really a nice uh, upgrade. And I saw that in somebody else that I follow uh, that has one of these Winnebago hikes. So we'll do that. Let's go over here and see how long it takes to fill the water. Uh, I'd have to look at the specs and I'll put it up on the screen, but I think the fresh water on this is somewhere around 30 or 31 gallons, if I remember right. This is the city water hookup here and this is the fill for uh, fresh water. So what I'm gonna do, I've got my hose here, and I've got it set on a, uh, uh, like a 
stream, as you can see. So it'll come out pretty good. And I'm just gonna put it in here. I'm gonna let it run till water comes out and, uh, or at least burps back out. And then we'll see how long this takes. So, all right, uh, here we go. We'll get ready to start. And we're off and running. Well, I've already got water coming out here. So I have to wonder what the source of that is. I must have something open or something's up. No? All right, let me investigate. I'll be back. Uh, I found it. I'm under here. I guess the dealer, when I picked it up, the drain valve here needs to be shut. So that would cause it. I guess that's out of the, um, I'm assuming that's out of the hot water heater, I guess. So anyway, all right. I didn't expect that, but let's go uh, put water back in and see if I've got that turned off. All right, here we go. We'll see if I got that valve turned off, right? Yeah, doesn't appear to be inner water draining. So we are off and running here. All right, I'll uh, do this and we'll see how long it takes for this hose to pump out the uh, 30 gallons or so. All right, I stopped at the three minute mark because I want to see uh, with this hose on uh, full pressure from the house tap, I want to see, um, we will go check the tank, how much water that would give me in three minutes. So we'll come inside here and we'll check the fresh water supply. And you see that I got about a half a tank. So that's good information to know. There'll be times where maybe I don't want a full tank or whatever. So um, yeah, I'm gonna make note of that. So let me go finish filling this up and then we'll come back. All right, looks like we've got this full. So uh, let's go check the indicator inside. All right, we'll get the cap back on. All right, we've got the cap on. Uh, let's go in here and see if we've got full water tank. All right, here we go. Yep, we do, we have a full tank. All right, let me kind of show you some modifications I've made for this first trip. All right, for this first trip, I had a desk uh, that I have in the dark room. I brought it over here and uh, put it in this space. This is just temporary. This is just for this trip. And it's gonna work out great because I'm ultimately going to build a custom uh, desk here that will <clears throat> be on this sidewall and it will fold up is the idea. And then it will fold down uh, when I want a desk. That way I can set here and uh, develop film. That's what the intent is here. So uh, you'll see when we go over to the dark room where we, when we pack over there, I've got uh, my Harrison uh, film changing tent and I've got all my chemistry and supplies and stuff like that that I need uh, for uh, the film development uh, in the field. We'll be do developing film tomorrow. So make sure you stay tuned uh, for the episode tomorrow because I'll be, hopefully, I'll find the horses and I'll be uh, photographing them with the Graflex four x five camera. And then of course be developing the film back here. And speaking of that, I've got a clever little idea where this is the <clears throat> uh, ventilation fan. On this knob, there was a little bit of extra room. So I put on this little blue uh, paracord here and then I've got a film uh, drying hanger where it'll just hook right on here and then um, on that particular one, I think it'll do six sheets of film, but I've got one coming that'll do 10 sheets of film. So anyway, it'll hang here, and then I'll just take this little rug. I got an old rug or an old towel, and I'll just lay it on the floor right here. And so when the little bit of drip off, we'll just uh, hit on that towel down there. So 
this is the idea here. I've got uh, the table for developing film on this trip or whatever. I've got a new folding chair. It's padded and I'll be setting in that chair there. All right, I haven't had any time to do anything with the new end table build. So that'll be coming up in a future episode where we'll be building a custom uh, table here. I'll be uh, using hardwood and making a, a special top that's removable that allows access uh, into the hot water heater and stuff if there's ever any maintenance needed there. Okay, so I've got a recliner here and that's what I will be chilling out in and relaxing and um, I'll be sleeping in that uh, tonight. So that'll be that. I'm gonna get um, either a piece of artboard or something I'll find over at the workshop <clears throat> just to lay on top of here for tonight. I did test all of the USB outlets. So it's got USB A and C. On each side in the AC, you actually have to have either shore power or the generators running. And then I've got, you'll see here, a little fan. You can see that running. So I've got two of those uh, with me. And that should be nice just to have a little air blowing on me here while I'm chilling out tonight. And my idea for entertainment tonight is I will, um, as I'm sitting back here in the recliner, kind of chilling out and relaxing, I'll have my MacBook Pro uh, notebook computer. And I will, um, I brought along some DVD movies and I'll probably watch a movie before I go to bed or at least part of it anyway. So, um, this is my view from setting back here in the uh, recliner. And uh, now that we've got the water tanks full, let's turn on the water pump. And then uh, I'll go turn on the faucet and we'll make sure we got water coming out. And then we'll test uh, the shower too. So let's do that real quick. If you look here, um, we've got, this is for the water heater. We're not going to do this right now, but the water pump, we do need that on. So... I can actually, I, you probably couldn't hear that, but I can hear that priming right now. That's a good sign. All right, let me turn on this little light here. All right. You can see I'm all ready to scrub some dishes up here, but let me get this out of the way. I don't want those wet for now. I'll get the little, little drain out of the way. And got a nice little detachable faucet here. And we have running water, yay. You can see here, that way I can kind of spray dishes off and stuff. That's super nice. All right, well, that's a success. So let's try the shower now. All right, uh, here's the shower. And I think what I'm going to do is, I don't want to get this whole area wet. So I think what I'm gonna do is just kind of get this down towards the drain here and do this. Let's see, let me make sure this baby is off. It is off. I didn't wanna get myself wet. All right, let me turn on some water. So you see I'm running in the sink, so I don't have to worry about that working. And if I pull up on this, this should make the shower work. Let's see if we get the shower working. And the shower is working. All right, so that's a win. Uh, what I'll do is uh, I'm gonna get a towel and kind of wipe that out or whatever here in a minute. And I'll do the same uh, with the sink here. So uh, I think we're in good shape. And as far as like packing stuff, I'm not doing too much. I do have the induction cooktop. I don't think I'll use that. Because uh, when we go over to the dark room, I've got the little butane stove. And I think I'm going to make eggs, maybe like an omelet or something like that for dinner tonight. And I'll show you that, of course. Just a tool, uh, like a versatile all-in-one little toolbox set and some bungee cords. You need bungee cords. If you're camping, man, you need bungee cords. You never know. And then a bunch of small uh, baggies from Walmart empty so I can use them as like trash bags and stuff and these are the shelves that belong in there and then um, I've got all of the uh, user manuals and stuff here uh, for the camper inside of here I figured it's a good idea to keep that with me and then uh, 
I'll have probably some other things. All right. The other thing I did is I've got some extra cord here. I got some other cord at the dark room too, uh, in case I've got these uh, command strips here. <clears throat> I've got a few of them. My friend John uh, yeah, brought those over and gave them to me. And I was thinking maybe about putting a hook here and maybe one down here and then stretching a cord across there uh, as needed to hang and dry the uh, large format sheet film. And then I'd just lay a towel down here for the little bit of drip off that would come off the film. So, and then what I am gonna do with this fan is I do have two of these, but I plan on taking that fan and pointing it this way, allowing that uh, gentle air to just blow uh, towards the film to help it dry faster. We'll be doing that uh, tomorrow. So, all right, what I'm gonna do is uh, I gotta go uh, inside the garage. I'll take you in there next. And um, I've gotta get my Honda generators. I've got two of the 2000 watt uh, Honda generators. I'll show those to you in a minute. And I'm gonna fill those up with fuel. And then I've got a parallel collect, uh, connection kit with a 30 amp cord uh, socket on it. And I'll uh, put those two together start them up, get them running, and then plug it into the 30 amp uh, power connector on the side of the camper here. And then I'm going to make sure that all the outlets work. Uh, they did work at the dealer before um, I brought it home, but I'll validate that they all work still. And then I'm gonna turn on the air conditioner and run that and make sure that it runs and there's no problems with that running because it's gonna be, um, really, really hot tomorrow. So it'll be pretty hot today, but it's going to be like really, really <laughs> brutally hot tomorrow. So um, the general plan is to get over there tonight. Hopefully, I'm crossing my fingers here, uh, find some of the horses and um, then photograph them in the good evening light and then come back, make dinner, uh, get a good night's sleep here and uh, then get up uh, about an hour before sunrise. So I'll be getting up around uh, like four o'clock or maybe even a little bit before, but I'll set the alarm for 345 and then um, get out. I got a hike to the location down by the river over there. Hopefully the horses will be in that particular area and then photograph in the morning, beat the heat that, that will be forthcoming, come back, and then we're going to be um, working on the desk here and developing the large format sheet film and uh, that way we'll see that we've got good negatives before we come back. And then in a future episode, uh, if we have any winning negatives, we'll be printing those in the dark room with my platinum and palladium process. And I will note that my intention right now is, I've done this once before in my Sprinter van, but I built a small 12 inch uh, LED UV printer. Now I've got a big one in the dark room that I can print up to 20 by 24. Uh, platinum and palladium prints, but I'm going to make a small little portable one. So I'm going to have a whole separate project and video on designing and building, and then I'll share my printing times and stuff. That way um, I'll be printing the four by five prints on either the five by seven paper or my five by seven negatives. I do have a five by seven Graflex too, but um, Jerry Gordon has that right now uh, over at Graflex Garage, getting that thing tuned up. So I'll be shooting 5x7 large format of the wild horses as well, and some of the landscapes. I, I should probably mention that real quick. In addition to photographing the horses themselves, I'm also telling the story of their home, where they live, and the wild landscape. And I've already got a few of those done, and I was using a Portland 6-inch uh, uh, soft focus lens. It, it took forever for me to ever find that lens. I mean, many, many years and I actually found a nine inch as well. And that nine inch will go on the five by seven. And then the six inch uh, already has been working on the four by five. So I'm doing those for the landscapes. That's all part of the narrative of the Pictorial Whispers project. So, all right, enough talking on this stuff. Let's go uh, check out the generators and get those fired up. All right, I'm inside my garage right now. Uh, you can see the Winnebago right here. Uh, here's my truck, my F-250 truck that I pull it with. And uh, here are the two uh, Honda generators. And this is the uh, parallel cord. You can see that 
each side of this goes in one red one black goes in each generator and then um, it has the 30 amp power cord on the end of it and then you plug in your power cord to it and into the camper and then i have a, a surge protector kit that um, i don't necessarily need when i'm running the generators but if i were ever plugged into shore power like here at the house or over at the dark room, then I would definitely uh, use that. So I, I do have that. So, all right, let me get these out. Get There's the fuel can, it's, it's filled up. And when I've run these in the past, uh, not for on this camper, because this is the first time, but when I've run these generators in the past, uh, I've been able to get between eight and nine hours of running on one tank of gas. And it's a little less than a gallon, these things hold, if I remember right. So. Uh, that's pretty good. So uh, that will at least give you overnight while you're sleeping, uh, full air conditioning, or in my case, as I'm developing film, do that very comfortably in the summer heat. So, all right, let me get these out here. I'm just going to put them out in the yard because the uh, 30 amp outlet is on that side. And uh, we'll get these fired up and we'll see if it works. Well, I got the generators all uh, set up here. I've got the parallel uh, cord uh, plugged in, ready to go. I've got the 30 amp cord in the camper, and I've already come to my first apparent rookie mistake. So um, on this parallels uh, kit here, you've got the NEMA L530. So that's the, that is definitely 30 amp, but look what we have here. It doesn't look like this round uh, I guess that's ground, I guess, uh, is going to fit in this connector. So I am screwed. I will not be having air conditioning uh, tonight. So I guess what I'm going to have to do is uh, go inside. I'll go back to Amazon, see if they make a version of this. Or I could go down to my electrical supply place take this kit with me and then see if I can just change out this outlet because it's just a it's just an outlet and uh, we'll see if I can maybe rig something up I'll have to get on that little adventure today it would appear so I'll see if I can pull it together but I will see if they make a version that will fit uh, in here so anyway I'll have to keep you posted so uh, it's still real early in the morning here nobody's open yet so I'm going to go ahead and pack and prep and do a bunch of other stuff off camera here. And then I'm going to go down to the electrical place uh, and when they open at 8 o'clock and see if I can come up with a solution uh, for the short run. So anyway, that's what I'll do. And I'll be back and let you know whether we do or do not have air conditioning for the uh, adventure tonight and the reason why we wouldn't have air conditioning over there because it's in the back country and there's no power or anything like that so okay I'll be back all right I have untangled the mystery I'm in here uh, in my living room and this is what I bought is I bought this with the L530R that's this uh, style connection right here and uh, what I should have bought is the one with the TT30R, uh, which is matches the outlet of the cable that is on the end of my extension cord. So there's a couple ways to solve this. Uh, I, I'm definitely gonna order this just to have it. Um, all right, a little further investigation. I talked to one of the electrical supply companies locally. They opened at 7 a.m. But unfortunately, they didn't have exactly what I needed. But I did find from the same people that made the parallels uh, cord, rather than buying a different parallels cord, which they do offer, and it was my own fault, I just didn't know the difference, is I need this adapter. So it's a female TT30R, which you see right here, to a male, well, that, that'll plug into the existing cord that goes in the camper um because the uh i guess the male side coming out of the extension cord would plug into this and then i need a male side like this which is the nema 
L530 uh, twist lock. That would go into the existing cable. So basically that's what I need is you can see the description here is a uh, 30 amp male to female uh, TT30 uh, L5 blah 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 blah. So anyway, that's what I need and I'll get this figured out one way or the other. I do have one other option that I didn't think about. There is a small little uh, RV dealer here locally in my town because I live in a very small town. So maybe they'll have either a cord or this adapter or something like that. But anyway, uh, I wanted to give you this technical information. So hopefully you won't, you know, have this problem if you ever uh, go down this path because I was completely unaware. So anyway, hope this helps. All right, the story continues. I just left my little small town RV dealer and look what they had. They had the adapter that I needed. So this will go into the uh, L530 side here. And then this is the cord that actually goes to the camper. And then obviously this will plug in uh, to this side. So I'm gonna head back uh, to the camper right now and get the generators back out again and get them fired up, get the parallels cord on, and uh, then I'll come back after that and we'll fire up the air conditioner and see if everything works like it's supposed to. And I've got my tote packed for developing film on site. And I thought I'd just do a quick inventory and show you what I'm going to do and all the supplies that I'm carrying. So remember, I'm only staying one night, most likely, maybe two. So I'm certainly squared away. So I'm uh, shooting four by five film. I'm doing the uh, SP645 tanks. I have two of those here. And that way I can do uh, 12 sheets at a, at a time, or I'm you know using one, the other one's drying, and so on and so forth. So I've got that. I've got uh, my film hanger I showed you earlier the cord, I got some film clips, so I've got uh, that for there. I use TF4 for my fixer. I've got HC110 actually right here. That's some smaller decanting of TF4. I've got a larger jug of it here. Two gallons of distilled water, some gloves, some uh, film sleeves after the negatives dry, some little wooden stir sticks, uh, photo flow, uh, just a few beakers that I need, a timer, a little four by five tray for um, hanging the, uh, you know, putting the film in there with the photo flow before I hang it. And then just an eight by 10 tray to kind of have it setting on the tabletop so I can, uh, you know, not get too much water or anything anywhere. And then uh, some paper towels. That's it. That's how simple it is. I've got this distilled down to just a simple uh, little tote. I do uh, have six of the Graphmatic holders loaded. And um, so it gives me six times six, uh, which would be 36 sheets of film. Should be more than enough for the weekend. And I do have some extra film if I need it. So anyway, I just wanted to show you this. And then the other thing I'm taking is my Harrison dark tint, which is right here. That'll just stay out on the table. And then this is just another toad of like my butane stove and and showering supplies and stuff like that. So, all right, uh, that should cover this. Let's head back over to the camper and see if we can get those generators and AC working. I was actually out, uh, I'm here at the darkroom building. I was out organizing the back of the truck. I thought I would just share this with you real quick. Uh, in this big tote here, I have various uh, hiking chairs. I hike with these out in the field when I'm having to set for long periods of time. With the horses, I have, uh, you know, big gimbals and heavy-duty tripods and just all that kind of stuff. Um, sometimes I do uh, use my Canon R5 to do the video work of the horses, um, and that's why I have that kind of gear right there. And then I've got all my hiking stuff here, extra, two extra sets of changes of clothes. I've been in the river uh, many times. I've been wet, uh, cold, etc. So I always carry extra clothes. And then I uh, have a tote here. And this has got uh, all kinds of extra stuff like a lap desk. And I've got a monopod uh, here. I've got uh, reflector kits, like if I wanna 
do wildflowers and, and things, which I do that with the Graflex, by the way. And uh, just some various things, an extra blanket and things like that. It's nice having all this extra space. And then I've got uh, different boots. I got snake boots, but I wear these um, muck uh, boots here the most. And then an extra camping chair, hiking sticks, etc. So anyway, just wanted to show you around a little bit what's on the inside of the truck bed. And then this is what it looks like. It's a little better organized. I've got all this extra space now where I'll put the uh, two generators, the Honda generators here and the fuel can. And then um, I've got a couple uh, small totes that I put here. And then the rest of it I put in the uh, back cab of the truck. I've got a lot of a lot of space back there. So uh, yeah, it takes a lot of space to do this stuff, but it's a heck of a lot of fun and it's enjoyable. So, all right, let's head over. All right, I came back and got everything plugged in and uh, I'm gonna go turn the air on and we'll check this out. Yeah, well, actually it's already running. So that is good news. Feel the air coming out of there. That's great. I've got uh, an outlet tester here. Make sure the 110 is fine. Yep. That's good. We'll check this other one here. Yep. I don't see that or not but there we go you can see that that's good and I'll test this other one up here and we're good there too all right so I'm gonna let this run for a little bit and uh, then I'm gonna wrap everything up and then I'm gonna head out and hit the road All right, I'm on the road finally. Um, everything checked out fine. Got through that little electrical problem uh, from earlier. And uh, so on the road, I'm only uh, about an hour, hour and 15 minutes away from the location where I'm gonna camp this time. And uh, I hope to get there uh, safely and shortly. And uh, after I get uh, camp set up and that, I'll uh, give you a look around and hopefully, as the light gets a little better later this evening, we'll be able to find the wild horses, and uh, I'll show you that. And then um, in the video tomorrow, I hope to be able to say that uh, we're going to be developing some large format film in the Winnebago. Uh, never know if the horses are going to be there. That's just, you know, you just never know. So hopefully, luck is with me, and I'll be able to do that. But uh, I'll keep you posted and I'll let you know and I'll show you around uh, the camping area when I get there. Alright, I'm back in the camper. I've got uh, six sheets of FP4 ready to develop. I didn't have any opportunity to uh, kind of video anything. I'm working uh, by myself this weekend. And so uh, I actually got here, got set up, saw the horses. I literally ran for them <clears throat> and was able to get hopefully six really really special exposures but uh, we'll find out here in a minute i'll show you my setup here and then there's my film hanger uh, right there so uh, the air conditioner is running it's quite uh, comfortable quite cool in here and so i'm excited to take and get this developed 
So let me show you what I've got. I've got the six, uh, SP645 tank. I've just got this here so I don't drip too much water. Uh, I've got HC110, TF4, photo flow, a small tray for um, photo flow and distilled water before I hang the film. Uh, graduate here, I'll be measuring 20 milliliters of HC110 and to 600 milliliters of distilled water. And then TF4 is mixed one to four. So I've got that um, ready to go. <clears throat> I've got this, so what I'm getting ready to do is uh, use the film changing tint here to get these uh, unloaded out of here into the holder. And then uh, I'm gonna start the development process. And I've got a little bitty tripod. I can maybe do a little bit of video work here. Uh, not too much, but I'll try and do a little bit. So let me, uh, let me get this loaded, this film loaded into here so we can get it developed.